means that they understood public interest as a way of articulating those rules, those laws, and those policies. So what is the Islamic definition of Masalaha Musa? It's very simple. What it says is that every action, every policy, every decision that people in power make in order to increase benefit and decrease harm. So there is a very important hadith, all of you probably know, la darar wa la darar. There is no harm done in Islam and no harm should be responded. So neither should we do harm nor should we stand by while harm is done. So the purpose of Islamic Sharia is to reduce harm and to increase benefit. So that is exactly what Maslaha becomes. So you make public policy with the explicit purpose of increasing the good of everyone and reducing the harm to everyone. It is the same as saying Amr bil Baruf wa Nahyan il Munkar. The purpose of Islamic law, the purpose of Muslim activism is to encourage good and forbid evil. So these are some of the principles that went out of. And I'm going to give you one example, another one, where this concept of unrestricted public interest maslaha was used. Again, uh, during the time of the Khulfa al-Rashidun, the reason why we go and look for examples in that period is because most Muslims, as if Sunnis, do not contest the legitimacy of these policies. And therefore, the philosophy <laughs> is justified by the legitimacy of those specific policies. And one of them is the pension system that Hazrat uh, Umar instituted while he was a caliph. <laughs> Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulullah. Bismillah, rahman, rahim. Inna allaha wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. Ya ayuhal lazina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Talking about public interest, I have to tell you that there is some rumor in this masjid that our elections last week were hacked by the Russians. Uh, we have no proof that Russia is involved, but we suspect that the Russians hacked our elections. So we are doing it again this week. Uh, those of you who took your ballots home and brought the ballots back, please give them to Dr. Naveed. Or, yeah, I think you give to Dr. Naveed. Everybody else who is responsible in this masjid is on the ballot, so it's not fair to give some of the contestants their ballot. If you forgot your ballot last time, doesn't matter. We have a lot of ballots there. You can see Dr. Naveed holding all the ballots. So, so go ahead there and do that. This is your moral duty, remember, participate in these elections. Because you attend this mosque, you are a member of this mosque, and so if decisions are made later on by this board and this committee for which you abstain from voting, and if those decisions are wrong, and they are against the principles of Islam, and they are against the public good, then let me tell you, you are equally guilty. Because you could have participated, you could have become a voice, and you chose not to participate. You cannot choose to, to get out of the game. This is one thing that God has done. He's created this, this universe and thrown you, and you cannot say, God, I'm not going to play. That's not allowed. So you have to play, and uh, yes, whether you like the rules or not, do engage in it. Uh, this is a great opportunity. This is a new mosque. Mashallah is growing fast and rapidly. Participate in it. Shape the destiny of your community. Participate in it. Define what is the public good in this, not just in this, the Muslim community, alhamdulillah, is growing rapidly in the state of Delaware. We will become a political voice. We will become a social voice. We will become an important part of the culture. Don't stay out of it. There are two people, kinds of people. Those who follow the stream and go wherever it goes. Then there are those who become agents of change and they give direction to their time and to their society. And I want all of you to do that. This committee will be participating in such decision making, so please seek to join. So why was I giving you a, such an abstract lecture on, on Masla? Because I feel that in our country today, we are compromising common good. In the United States, we don't have to sell the idea of common good, at least with the political theories. The whole idea of a commonwealth is based on the idea of common good. 
In other parts of the world, when you talk of Sharia, sometimes we talk about what is good only for Muslims. But America is not based on what is only good for Christians or Jews. America based, is based on the idea of what is good to, for all of us. But unfortunately, when you look at gun laws, and who in the world can say it is in the interest of the common good that people can buy 40 guns? I mean, the man in Las Vegas, if he had waited three more weeks, he would have had silencers legally available to him. The Congress was going to provide. He's not a lone wolf. People like him have been supported and enabled by our own Congress. We make sure that it is as easy as possible to have these guns. Is it in the interest of the common good? No. So what is compromising this idea of the common good or this public interest is that this country is now proliferating with special interests. Whether you're looking at guns, whether you're looking at healthcare, whether you're looking at foreign policy, any of the things which the world's richest country should be able to provide to its citizens, we find special interests constantly undermining public interest. I want the Muslims of America to also become a special interest whose goal is to pursue the common good. Listen to me again. I want American Muslims in this country to become a force for good, for the common good. We want you all to grow up and become a force for the common good. We are just 2% or less of this population. We need to be, become a force that will a special interest group whose goal is to achieve common good and public interest. That is our responsibility. We will have to answer God on the day of judgment as to what we do. We cannot remain bystanders. I don't know whether we heard this hadith. Every time there is a divorce in a neighborhood, God is going to hold 40 homes in each direction responsible for their divorce. So if you have a house, and you have a divorce in this house, 40 homes in each direction, God is going to call and now say, how did you allow this family to break? Now, of course, we have issues of privacy, etc., so I can't go and worry about that. But the philosophy is this, that if there is violence in Las Vegas or in Florida or elsewhere, even though we live in Delaware, God is going to have us accountable. And he will want to know, what did we do to pursue good? What did we do to make religion safe in this country? What did we do to protect people's life? What did we do to protect people's property? The five maqasid of the Sharia. So that is an important, the whole point of talking about maslaha is to understand that maslaha is one of the most fundamental goals of Islamic Sharia, that is to encourage what is good and to forbid what is evil. Amr bil maruf wa nahiyan al munkar. So from an individual perspective, that is our manifestation. From a collective purpose, it is our job to make that which is beneficial stronger and that which harms collectively weaker. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he gives us the opportunity, the wisdom, the courage to become a force for the common good. I also pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he gives us the intellect, the wisdom, and the hikmah to understand the true meaning of our faith and also understand the true responsibilities that our faith imposes on us as believers towards the rest of the world. God is very forgiving. He will forgive us if we have been lax in matters of ibadah. But I'm not very sure he will be as forgiving when it comes to Muhammad's. When there are people suffering in Myanmar and we are sitting here and watching movies and doing nothing, I think we'll have to explain to God that God is going to say, I gave you safety, I gave you security, I gave you prosperity, I gave you voice, what did you do? I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He brings us all close to Him. Ya ayyuhal ladhina aman uskuru allaha zikran kaseena. Rabbana atayna fi dunya hasanatan wa fil aakhirati wa hasanatan wa khina azab al-nar. Inna allaha ya'amru bil-adli wal-ihsan wa itadi al-qurwa wa yanhar al-fashah wa al-munkar al-baghi ya izakum la alakum tazakkaroon wa akhim as-salah. Allah wa Allah wa Allah wa Allah wa Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu an la Muhammad Rasulullah. Ashhadu an la Muhammad Rasulullah. Ayyul Salat, Ayyul Salat. 
Assalamu alaikum. Uh, just a quick reminder and announcement. Uh, as uh, Dr. Mukhtar Khan already spoke about it, it is very important that you participate in this election. Um, I understand that you may not recognize all of these names, but that is also a, a, a point to think about that why do we not recognize these names? Uh, they were nominated, so they are known in the community, but if you do not know about it, it means you're not uh, here enough times to recognize who these people are. All of these people are good people. They, they are uh, accomplished individuals, and um, uh, you know, personally, I think they'll be, they'll be a great asset. Uh, for the community, but we need uh, your uh, vote of approval uh, for that. So please make sure to return these uh, in the ballot box that we that we have uh, set up uh, on the table uh, by, by the exit. Uh, inshallah, also sisters in the in the masjid, in sisters masjid, uh, you should have received um, uh, these ballot papers. Please make sure that you return it as well. We need your voice uh, as well. Your voice is just as important as anybody else's. Inshallah, Jazakallah. Still. Allah Akbar. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Malik Yawm Al-Din. Iyaka na'bud wa iyaka nasta'in Ihdina al-sirat al-mustaqim Sirat al-lazeen an'amta alayhim Ghayri al-maghdub alayhim Wala al-dalim Amin Wa yaquluna ta'atum سمي الله لمن حمده الله أكبر اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين انعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين امين
وإذا جاءهم أمر من الأمن أو الخوف أذاعوا به ولو ردوه إلى الرسول وإلى أولي الأمر منهم لعلمه الذين يستنبطونه منهم ولولا فضل الله عليكم ورحمته لاتبعتم الشيطان إلا قليلا فقاتل في سبيل الله لا تكلف إلا نفسك وحرض المؤمنين عسى الله أن يكف بأس الذين كفروا والله أشد بأسا وأشد تنكيلا الله سمع الله لمن حمده